Hello, hello. This is uh, Pigsy done another video. Uh, possibly going to talk about it. Might if it might fill into MGTOW is narcissism, and it also fit, fits into other things because it gets a bad rap, to be honest. Which I'm not saying that narcissists are not potentially dangerous, and they're dangerous than everybody else. Um, and it's identifying if you're a narcissist or the qualities in you. So I, I yes, I mean I qualify as slightly narcissistic before I do the videos for the sake of the videos. I don't actually care. To, if, I'm not trying to earn money out of them. Somebody would be driven by a materialism. Um, I'm more interested in accumulating a bit of self worth and power, really. And uh, how can you recognise it? Well, if it's certain quality, so I've got a kind of carer's uh, personality, is why I'm a, I work as a carer. But the negatives of that, you like to try to control your environment and you inf try to influence things around you as well. And you do it without even realising to a certain degree. Some of it you ask open questions, you don't upset them, but you are trying to manipulate them at some level. So, you know, should, should I move this? I mean, you've put in their, their interest first because you're trying to formulate bonds and long term connections you're not trying to screw them over but if you're unhealthy in your in your mind you might do that you might say I'm just gonna borrow this I'm sure you don't mind and you know so you take your in you start putting your interests ahead of theirs and um, it doesn't always I say well, it won't work out people get fed up with that and if people are depressed they definitely do that because they might say oh well, how's your day and then before you say, oh, it's not too bad. And you, uh, before you can finish that sentence, I say, well, I've had a terrible one. And um, so that's the other thing is people to cut into um, sentences and conversations. Sometimes it's an impulse, basically. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. It's an impulse at the, in, in the uh, behind the scenes. And I think there's a kind of there's also a psychological pain. Uh, so it's a hypersensitivity to things as well. So, you know, a bit like my phone got damaged and um, the holder got damaged. So within 24 hours, I've bought myself everything I'd lost. And I've done it with a watch before. I think a watch had gone or it got damaged or something. And I liked it, so I got myself one straight away as soon as I could because it just burrows into your mind. And it's like, I can't ignore it. It's irritating that it's damaged. Which might sound daft, but it's like um, a bit of the obsessive compulsive components. And everyone has these certain qualities, so people might say, oh yeah, well that's a bad thing to have. But the, the reality is, we are all in some form of spectrum. It's like, um, so I did an, a, a narcissistic test, and I think it places me somewhere, sort of, as, a, as much as an American, maybe slightly higher. Uh, and that's it really and I mean mentally I'm healthy things do get under my skin sometimes but I haven't um, reacted to them in a sort of negative way and um, there's something just to be aware of certain situations because you can start becoming more controlling over them Does this guy know? Yeah. I'm trying to think about any other sort of issues. I mean, narcissists can be very protective over their children. They sometimes might not be. I think because they want them to be like themselves, to a certain degree. But when they see themselves in them, they're quite protective of them. It's just um, that quality. And also, women can be quite narcissistic about things. It's a different, um, different neurosis impulses, and this is why they take um, great care in their appearance and so on. It's not just because they want to increase the chances of finding a great mate um, or partner. They're also they're, they're social movers. They go, they use that socialism to move around in, and people they got like st their standards basically, and then these standards sometimes fall into stereotypes. Like wearing certain clothes and listening to certain things and people that are uh, different to that to be um, sort of uh, capitalised as always. I guess the other thing about 
forms of the uh, sort of narcissism is that it's a hidden thing within them. It's, like it's an ego drive. And um, I think to a certain degree people all have this. It just hasn't really been explored. You usually see things, I keep getting stuff from Reddit and stuff sent across, like how do you deal with the narcissist, what to deal with them. Um, I think they just need to, to, to deal with them as they need to acknowledge that they have certain traits in them. It makes it a bit more easy because when you're very sensitive, it's almost, it's possibly on the autistic spectrum, you know? And seeing when you, the red lights come on, like you're not happy with something, taking time out to deal with it. And that's the same for all mental health, you know, if you've really got frustrated over something. And the same for, for a partner, if you're, say if I'm with a partner, a female partner, she's not in a good mood, I'd ask them, you know, should I give you a bit of space and then leave them to it? And, you know, we sort of have a chat when you wanna, wanna sort of engage. And they res probably respect that, is that you're, you're putting them first. And um, yeah, because I mean, sometimes, if I was really annoyed at something, I just wanna, I mean, the best book of mechanism was go out for a walk, and I might find that it doesn't go away. I'm still irritated, I just go for a walk. It's not because there's a, a chance of um, vo volatile necessarily, but if you're in a place that's toxic and you can't get out of it, the, the stress levels are just, it's just adding to um, that container. And because the personal, personality type being a carer type personality is that you don't want to be seen as angry, so you bottle it up. And then it gets to the point with the Jekyll and Hyde um, scenario where the the um, Hyde comes out and um, I'm trying to think it was Doc because Doctor Jekyll say so Hyde was his uh, alter ego and um, Hyde comes out and um, he can only exist for so long because he's not he's not supported by your other personality structures not unless you're not very well it's um, it's a, like an animalistic being, you know, when you're purely angry over things. Well, that was a bit crazy, like you're going off the other way. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, so it can't exist for too long, it's like a manifestation. And it's a bit like a lot of things. It's like at work, um, there's often, just depending on your type of job, to be a, a slightly psychopathic. So you have to suspend your personality and, and and follow the rules and do everything in a particular way. And you might not feel like doing it, and that's difficult. And I think um, there's a disruptiveness about um, about narcissism. Like I think it's it's an extrovertism of sorts. It, it, that ism exists. Um, there's a desire to engage in situations that seem quite boring, in a way, you know. Because I've, I think it's probably more kind of, um, especially if you like a. Because I went, I remember we were going to a, a particular office, <coughs> and everyone there was all this IT type stuff, and I had the heads down all the time. And um, I went in there to ask a question. And it's like, hello, are you anybody here? You know, I didn't quite do it like that. It's like, oh, hi, how is how is everyone? I just looking for someone to get eye contact, and it wasn't. And I just stood up some, next to somebody's desk and hi, I just need a quick question. And then they couldn't really avoid me. But because they were being so introverted and they like there's something wrong with them, I felt like I needed to control that situation and um, manipulate. They probably didn't mind to me. I sort of just broke, broke the ice really. But that, in essence, is a, a type of narcissistic um, engagement. It's just a self-love. You like doing these things. It makes you feel good about yourself. But it doesn't necessarily make you a bad person. It's just you need to keep everything in check. I mean, it's a bit like on occasion, so I, get to, I can suffer from depression. And I'm not really fully aware that I am. It just creeps in a bit, you know? And I might notice that I might be sleeping a bit more or my uh, eating habits are slightly different or just feeling like Christ this thing will never end or something you know it's that kind of or maybe my music I might be in a mood where I start listening to particular music I find anger breaks through um, depression so if something's annoyed you it tends to 
burn that motion up. You know, like an injustice in some way. It gives you the, it gives you the uh, need to fight back, and that motivates other emotional changes from that point. So it's basically, it's breaking the, the cycle of a depressive um, state. It's, it sort of sedates your mind in some way and burns it out on others because you're thinking about things that you don't need to think about. Stuff like that. Um, but I think, yeah, and there's also something else. It's like um, sort of analysing my own personality. It's it's like uh, Tourette's. So, I mean, I probably fall into the Asperger's uh, spectrum, but I'm a kind of hybrid, I'm half and half. So I can obsess about some things, problem solve into the, and then keep going at it until I get somewhere. And then other times I'm fine, other times things can annoy me, you know, other times I think I'm not affected by things. Mostly I might seem um, detached uh, or very abstract, drawn into things. I think about things in an abstract manner. Uh, very analytical as well about stuff. Um, yeah, so the Tourette side is I generally um, I'm really happy, and I sometimes I sometimes laugh just for the uh, just different engagement with people. That might be the um, narcissism as well. Either interfused, so it's kind of um, it's it's conditioning combined with what people would see as um, a trait because it's adapted to be functional, and that's that's how it comes across. So, you know, it's a bit like humour and things. I find them quite um, stimulating and they stimulate mental growth, brain growth. Um, which is quite good. Um, so, yeah, I've been practising some language stuff as well. So, this moving on from our... And, and the thing is also, you need to be progressing forward. And once you're aware of that, you just think, well, that you've got potential for different types of behaviour. You just want to keep them in check and make sure they, they remain in a healthy state. You know, like you don't want to be in a situation whereby, I don't know, someone breaks something of yours and it really sets you off. Um, or does something. Or money, you know, there might be some area that you're very controlling. And if that's a problem in your relationship. And it's the same for, um, you know, some. There might be uh, your partner may have certain traits and once you acknowledge that then you, you can find a management program between you. But maybe they just need to be alone sometimes. Or, um, or maybe they need company, you know. They might need to see, you know, sometimes I'm a bit needy and stuff, so. I think I get needy because I'm used to doing a lot of things on my own. And when I start developing feelings for someone, it's, it, it becomes very intense, actually. It's a very, you know, the last time it took months and months and months to go over that. It took a bloody year, I think, to emotionally recover. It wasn't even a proper relationship, really. It just um, got to know somebody every year and was already had strong feelings and I just lost myself a little bit. But I say, once you know it's there, then you have to manage it. And it's time as well. You spend a lot of time with someone, you might develop stronger feelings than you intend to. Especially for engineered reasons for you to keep meeting up with them. So you don't want to be in that sort of situation either. Otherwise it's more your fantasy. Then reality. Okay. So yeah, on a more personal development note, I've been doing a bit of um, a bit of Russian. So I'll do a bit more of that. There's something I saw they have these like speed dating events. Uh, in Kiev and um, Karvik in the Ukraine, so meet a mixture there. I mean, there's some people consider them Russian women that go there as well. You know, all sorts, singles and stuff. And and, it, and it's um, I think it's about like six hundred dollars or something. And then you they book a room, the event probably shipping a lot of girls in there and just have a great evening really to translate. I mean some of them might have been their expenses may be paid to turn up. But they've had um, psychological um, evaluations uh, undertaken whether I believe that or not. It doesn't really matter. But if it, if it's actually real when you meet up and you meet up say with eighty women, you know, they can't all be um, 
can't work for bad reasons. And also, it's a better life. That's what really what people aim for. All people aim for better lives. Here you go, then. That's it. The white van is waiting for me. Because there's always these arguments about green cars and other stuff. Depends what you want. So if you're in a position, I've like got the crypto, so I've got the finance sorted out, future finance, um, look for a partner who's got um, a good working um, credentials and structure there, um, good values, strong values, and you know, for me, it, I quite like um, Slavic women, I'm quite interested in that, that's, that's my thing, I mean, for other people it's different, you know, I've got a chat, I've got a mate who's very much likes the Thai girls. But they, you have to be aware that they're, they're not necessarily going to be, you know, a better position financially and stuff. So, but if he's if he's an older guy, he's got the money, she's got the looks, you know, to choose someone half your age and build a happy life. That's that's really it. I mean, most men want sport girls and they're possibly they're in that they're fertile. But, but then again, if they don't mind, they, if there's not an issue, they can date anyone older. I mean, you can date someone the same age. Probably wouldn't date someone older from a different culture. But you think, well, why don't you just date somebody older in your own? I mean, it's, unless she looks great, health-wise, you know, that's probably the key factor. I think because um, working life for guys can be quite bloody hard. I mean, I keep getting injuries in my back. And, my bloody ankles and stuff because I'm driving a lot and I'm assisting people and doing stuff and um, I work seven days a week as well so you know I, I could have more downtime but I, like I say I don't just do it because I mean this is the good side of, of something as well is that because of my the personality type and so on helping people make a difference in their life it feels a fulfillment for them and it gives me a sense of fulfillment in my own life you know, it's like um, the bits, the bits that are um, not quite fixed in my life feel better because I've uh, I've made a difference in theirs, and I think, well, yeah, I'm providing a difference to society. I've got a function. I mean, it doesn't just feed into some ego. It makes you feel better about yourself. That's the that's the key factor. It's it's um it's self rewarding. I mean. It, as a result, maybe certain career paths wouldn't be open to me. Like, I wouldn't want to be locked in a little office somewhere, stuck in front of a computer. I might like it at some level, but I still want to get out and mix with people. And I've got a job that's very really sociable, so I can mix. There's also opportunities to meet with a lot of women, but they tend to be, um, they've already partnered up. And it's not, I wouldn't really want to date anyone from work. It's, uh, it's a bit messy. However, you can have quite a friendly um, bit of banter with them. Um, female workforce you have to always be aware that sometimes they sharp and knives because they present quite positive I mean it's what I had when I worked for um, a local authority and the office environment because it was like it's like not top dog it's top cat in there <laughs> that's it I think that's what it is um, there's a, a, some matriarchal patriarchal mixture because um, they act quite naturally in a way they're trying to um, nurture you to be the best person they're trying to make sure they get results and um, outcomes and stuff so there is the masculine elements to it but there's also the feminine is that if they can acknowledge your problem and accept it they might support you more than maybe a bloke would a bloke might say oh just get on with it <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's drive in here. Yeah. Oh, there we go, perfect. Well, it's a piece of sign off. Have a great one. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.